good morning good morning everyone and uh, good morning welcome we'll continue with learning about the keys to supernatural ministry let us pray and then we will get started i want to request one of our online students to please pray for today's class anyone heavenly father we thank you lord for this time you have given us to come in one accord as your family my master to learn your word my master about your supernatural ministry miracles signs and wonders lord i pray lord that you will lead our pastor my master and give her discernment to teach us the right word my master today that we may be transformed in your word my master and experience your presence in the mighty name of jesus i pray amen amen thank you sister gertrude good to hear your voice um let's look at what we have for this morning till now we finished four keys in the last class we had continued on the fourth key which is the renewed mind and saw the importance of hearing from the holy spirit renew the mind with the word of god and be sensitive to the the way the holy spirit thinks or the way god thinks hear those um those promptings and act according to it so that there can be an increase or there can be uh, a breakthrough a miracle so on and so forth so today we come to the fifth key which is regarding the anointing of the holy spirit before we start talking about the anointing let's try and understand what anointing is so what is the anointing the presence yes okay the power and the presence of the holy spirit in the life of a believer we can also talk of the anointing as the empowering and the work of the holy spirit through a human vessel so a believer is given the power or empowered right to do god's works so today though god can come and do various miracles what does he choose to do he will work through us his people jesus said you shall do greater things than these no now that i go to the father why because he was sending the holy spirit to us when the holy spirit came he brought his power and uh, in the old testament we see that people were empowered by the holy spirit on various occasions or based on various ministries but for the new testament believer the beauty is that the holy spirit has come with a ministry of empowering every single believer so that is the change that has happened uh, as far as the new testament and beyond okay so sister gertu uh, do you have a question already uh, yes sister i just wanted to know this anointing is uh, a temporary or is it um, remains mm. with the believer or it is only for that season mm -hmm. okay so when we talk about the anointing uh, john apostle john he uses the term anointing in 1 john 2 verse 20 he says the anointing within okay the anointing within so while we know that the empowering of the holy spirit on us we'll discuss about you know all these things uh, soon but because he is equating this term anointing to the holy spirit himself we can answer your question as yes we have the anointing at all times it never goes away from us because can the believer uh, will the holy spirit ever leave the believer never so 
Apostle John is calling the Holy Spirit as the anointing within. Answer to your question is, no, the Holy Spirit will never leave us. We always have the indwelling presence or the anointing of the Holy Spirit with us. Does that address it? Yes, Open sister. It? Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. So we were saying that um, in the Old Testament, as far as the works of God are concerned, uh, the whole the Holy Spirit would come upon people for those times. Okay, so when we had prophets, the Holy Spirit, like they have ways in which they told the Spirit came upon me, you know, the Spirit opened my eyes. They have different ways in which they describe. And the Holy Spirit would come upon them and they would do all these supernatural works. Whereas in the New Testament, we have the Holy Spirit always with us and the He can empower us, you know, for all things that we require. Yes. The Old Testament, uh, Pastor, like uh, we've seen Samuel, uh, God telling Samuel to anoint ah. David, anoint Saul earlier and yes. things. So as we say, as we are discussing right now in the New Testament, Holy Spirit is with us and the thing. So can we always keep asking uh, the Holy Spirit to keep anointing uh, us on our duty? Definitely. So that's what I'm saying. When we consider the ministry of the Holy Spirit, what are all the things that he does for the believer? Apart from, you know, guiding the believer, leading the believer, directing the believer, at all times, he empowers also as per our situation. So we can keep manifesting the gifts of the Spirit and all other supernatural things can happen. the holy spirit to anoint every word that i speak every mm. prayer every prophecy every yes, yes, why uh, not? speaking you can keep asking that you can you know? we can it helps it does sure so this is um this is the understanding of what the anointing is okay so every believer uh, is a human vessel through whom god can work um and uh, why do we need the anointing you know why can't we do things on our own. Okay, so that we can rely more on the spirit, spirit that will be with and more less power, on the flesh. And it will be of more what God wants us to speak to a particular person uh, through a sermon or through individual. Mm -hmm. So it's not what I think, it's what God wants. I'm just a visit. Okay. So okay. through me. Yeah, uh, so we, we want uh, the spirit of God to manifest himself. Manifest his glory, manifest his power. We can put it across like that. Now, if we consider what the anointing can do, right? Even then, it causes us to desire for more of the anointing. Could somebody read? Um, we'll have two passages. One is Isaiah 10, verse 27. So one person can read that out. And then another person can please read Luke 4, verses 18 through 19. Isaiah 10 verse 27, it shall come to pass in the day that his burden will be taken away from your shoulder and he, his yoke from your neck and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil. Mm, okay, so the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing oil. Fine. Uh, here where we're talking about, we can just focus in on that last portion of the scripture. The yoke or uh, the burden will be removed, destroyed because of the anointing oil. So there are certain pictures in this, in this statement uh, that relate to when we say yoke. Yoke is burden, heaviness, bondage. So that's the picture we get, stronghold, a work of Satan, yoke. Okay, we use that term because uh, sin is enslaving and it, it keeps its victims captive. So there is a yoke that sin brings on our lives. Now, if the yoke has to be destroyed, if that bondage of slavery has to be broken, God is giving 
his people the anointing oil the anointing oil or it's it's like a blessed oil which has the power to destroy the evil work of satan now oil is generally the picture of the holy spirit so when we say that the anointing oil will destroy the yoke the understanding that god wants us to have is that his holy spirit power because what is the oil it's the picture of the holy spirit the holy spirit and his anointing will destroy strongholds of satan so why do we need the anointing we are saying it has the power to destroy demonic works that's why we need the anointing okay it's when the holy spirit comes with this power that the works of the enemy will be destroyed so you and i can't do it we can go of course we have other keys we've been talking about the word of god you know uh, yeah faith all of which will display god's power but here's another key you know add to your uh, add to that set with the anointing as well so imagine we go with the word we go with faith we go with the anointing satan doesn't stand a chance okay so the anointing is powerful that's why you and i must be must desire the anointing so if i go i pray or i minister i do anything empowered by the holy spirit what's happening the works of satan are being destroyed amen so that's why we need it now look let's look at what jesus said about the works he could do with the anointing of the spirit luke chapter 4 verses 18 and 19 luke chapter 4 verse 18 and 19 the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to heal the broken hearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed to proclaim the acceptable year of the lord mm, okay so this is before the lord jesus uh, even starts his ministry he goes up to the synagogue or opens up the scriptures you know and he and he says this uh, uh, he acknowledges what god has empowered him with so in verse 18 this is the acknowledgement he says the spirit of the lord is on me jesus is the son of god but when we read when we study christology we know that he was fully man when he was here on the earth so he needed the empowering of the holy spirit to do the supernatural work so even jesus is acknowledging the anointing of god on his life that's what he's saying in that first statement the spirit of the lord is on me because he has anointed me meaning he has empowered me he is going to work through me a human vessel at that time okay uh, and he says these are all the activities that i'm going to be engaged in so um, i'll come to your question so he says proclaiming good news so when we are preaching about christ what do we need anointing jesus said anointing is on me i am going to proclaim good news good news is the gospel right the poor meaning those who are hungry those who are needy those who want to hear something good uh, a message of hope with the anointing i'm going to preach to them and then he adds on to the other things that he is going to do proclaim freedom for the prisoners meaning those who are bound by satan he is going to release them so you and i when we are ministering we are ministering deliverance we are ministering you know healing miracles uh, and whatever else we need the anointing jesus took the anointing that's how he did you know his proclamation his uh, uh, ministry of deliverance recovery of sight for the blind set the oppressed free proclaim the year of the lord's favor jesus is saying i'm going to do all these things with the anointing that's his first declaration the spirit of the lord is upon me he has anointed me he has empowered me and i'm going to go and do all these works so you and i today 
for us to see the supernatural manifest we need the anointing we can't just uh, say yeah i'll i'll go i'll do it i'm not going to depend on the holy spirit it won't work out we need the power of the spirit even jesus went in the power of the spirit so you and i also must go in the power of the spirit so we have we've been saying right the presence the power of the holy spirit is what is the anointing yes uh, vimal you wanted to say something anointing is only from holy spirit or it can be people can anoint uh, okay the anointing the way we see it in the bible it is only from god yeah uh, sorry so see through people and all there are many ways in which the anointing we we'll, we have a small section on uh, impartation we'll come to it later on it can happen but even if it happens through some means like a person or a ministry or something ultimately god is the one who has to choose to anoint us you understand because why are we saying this when elisha comes to elijah he says give me a double portion okay now think about this elijah was a man of power do you think he would have wanted more power to walk in more power he already was walking in power by god's uh, anointing if given an option elijah you have this much anointing do you want double anointing what do you think his answer would have been elijah yes of course of course right yeah give me double or if there is an option elijah do you want triple anointing elijah would have said of course why not the point i'm trying to make is elisha is asking for double anointing right if elijah could give elisha wouldn't he have given it to himself he would have anointed himself you know twice thrice three times four times so that i will be more anointed but elijah couldn't do it he couldn't do it for himself neither could he do it for elisha he never told elisha okay come i lay my hands on you he didn't he told him if you uh, watch me being taken off then you will have right what you are asking for why because elisha's anointing came from god elisha had to receive it from god elijah received it elijah received it from god so the point is we all receive our anointing from the lord we can't like give and take to each other yeah we can pray say okay god anoint this person we can by faith we can release all that is there but that's a different uh, aspect altogether so we'll get into it later huh? and for anointing we just uh, need holy spirit or we have to go for some like pastors and to anoint us like because yeah. anointing is from holy spirit only right so that's what i'm saying vimal um it is from holy spirit it is from holy spirit uh, but there are times there is this element of uh, what we call as transference of anointing which can happen for that yes you know we we need an association with a person of god you know man or woman of god or their ministry so when we are connected to a person or a ministry then god may choose to take what is on their lives and a small measure may be put on our lives so you don't always have to uh, to answer your question anointing will anyway come from god but if there are opportunities to be connected to such people or ministry we can receive a measure of anointing from them also but we should not go running behind people running behind like you know like elisha elija don't be running behind people and saying oh you are my elija you are my elija and all no need to do all those things yeah but we should be faithful to people that's the point yeah yeah we can have the desire but it's god who chooses to give it comes from him anointing comes from god it doesn't come from people okay 
Yes. Okay. Right. So we were saying, why do we need the anointing? Because the anointing has power. It will destroy the works of Satan. The anointing is what Jesus worked with. So if he did the good works with the anointing, how can you and I do what God has called us to do without the anointing? We can't. So we need it. Which is why we desire, we pray, we ask, we say, Lord, anoint me. Fill me with your spirit, O oh God. Empower me with your spirit. And then when we go do the work, we see supernatural works of God being done. Now, two ways in which you know we can understand the anointing. Anointing is the presence of the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit. So we already said that the presence of the Holy Spirit dwells in us at all times. Um, we are born again because of the work of the Spirit. There is you, with our, unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. And how are we born again? Jesus explained, uh, nobody sees the wind, the work of the wind. But when he was talking about the wind at that time, he meant the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes and he uh, has a role to play in us being born again. And then from that point onwards, when we are born again, the Holy Spirit starts to live inside us. So every believer carries the presence of the Holy Spirit. 1 John 2.20. Can somebody read it out, please? 2.20 and 27. Both, both the scriptures can be read out. John 2.20. But you have an, an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. Yes, and verse 27. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you and you do not need that anyone teach you but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie mm. and just as it has taught you you will abide in him mm. so uh, he's talking about the anointing that dwells inside the believer and the activities of the anointing what are the activities of the anointing leading teaching. So, in other words, nothing but the ministry of the Holy Spirit. That's what he does for every believer, guiding the believer. So, Holy Spirit dwells inside every believer, guiding and leading the believer. So, this is the anointing within. However, there is also something called as the anointing upon. Okay? There are two experiences. First is the born again experience when the Holy Spirit comes and dwells inside. But what did Jesus tell his disciples? He said, you need to wait. You need to wait. You shall receive power from on high. Okay. Then you shall be my witnesses. All of Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So he was referring to the baptism in the Holy Spirit, which is a separate experience. Though we are born again, though we are believers, we need the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Because only then he said, you shall be my witness. Witness with power. So can I not be a witness without the baptism in the Holy Spirit? Of course we can be. Of course we can proclaim the gospel. Of course we can do God's work. But there is something about the baptism in the Holy Spirit that God did not want the early church believers to miss it. So the disciples, those 120, they received baptism in the Holy Spirit. From then we see that every believer, as soon as they were born again, there was a pattern. They would baptize them in water and lead them into Holy Spirit baptism. So every believer was being called to the empowering through the baptism in the Holy Spirit. So the same thing is applicable for us today. Anointing within, we already have. Now, the second is anointing upon, which is baptism in the Holy Spirit. So you and I need that. Uh, and uh, with that anointing is what we will do the works of God. Jesus of Nazareth, right? Uh, he went about doing good works. Why? Because he was anointed by the Holy Spirit. Can someone quickly read Acts 10 verse 38? 
it talks about how jesus did the works because of the anointing of the holy spirit how god anointed jesus of nazareth mm -hmm. with the holy spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for god was with him mm, amen so how did jesus do his ministry empowered by the holy spirit if jesus needed the holy spirit to do his ministry can you and i do the ministry by our, by ourselves no way we can't that power is required you remember in matthew 12 jesus cast out a demon spirit and uh, when asked how did you do it he says by the spirit i did it by the spirit so by the spirit you and i will see the manifestation of the supernatural which is why we have to desire and say god let let there be more anointing greater work of the spirit in my life okay so as we receive more of uh, the the you know presence the power of the holy spirit we'll keep seeing manifestations of the power of god now once again to uh, just reiterate yes we will receive we can increase in the anointing but we must always remember that we are already anointed holy spirit is already in us at all times what did jesus say uh, in hebrews 13:8 i will never yeah uh, hebrews 13:5 i will never leave you nor forsake you he will never leave us his holy spirit will not leave us and so he'll continue to be with us and we are always anointed we can also make a note of one more scripture this is second corinthians 1 verse 21 uh this is also a good scripture to read aloud so that we will not forget it so one of us can we turn to it and read it please 2 Corinthians now, 1 21 Now he who established us with you in Christ and has anointed us in God Ha huh. so we have been established in Christ and anointed Who is anointed every believer So it's it's not wrong for us to say I am anointed It's not wrong every believer in Christ is already anointed whether they are a you know like a, a preacher behind the pulpit or not <laughs> even if the preacher is anointed and preaching the believer is anointed and listening all are anointed all believers are anointed anyone who is in christ is anointed amen amen, amen. so can we all uh, say this to ourselves second corinthians 121 just say i am anointed okay online students can't hear anyone hopefully you're saying it yeah by faith we we believe <laughs> that all of you are also saying it yeah so just uh, let's speak to ourselves and say i am anointed we have the anointing but we have to grow in the empowering of the holy spirit so that we can see the manifestation of the supernatural any thoughts any questions we'll go a little bit slow because this subject uh, we have to understand it properly ha huh? how do you how do you effectively know if if we are growing how do we effectively grow in the anointing ha huh. so that's what Ownership. we are coming to okay, okay. so uh, in our notes it says activation of the anointing or in other words growing in the anointing increasing in the anointing understanding how the anointing works so we look at the keys of that uh so that we can all increase okay yes 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 yeah so in second corinthians diksha was asking whether it refers to second uh, corinthians 121 refers to the born again believer answer is yes every born again believer even if you are born again for 5 seconds they are anointed okay so we are all anointed okay coming to how to flow in the anointing what are what, what are the um uh, keys again i don't want to use the word keys but what are the uh, steps to be aware of 
so we will consider them okay uh, the first one in order for the anointing to flow very powerfully through our lives uh, we must be aligned to god's grace and gifting upon our lives so that's the first step okay so this means that you and i would need to understand our calling uh and when we know or even if we don't you know recognize our calling at least our gifting and the grace of god upon our lives okay let's quickly look at one verse and then we'll talk more ephesians 3 verse 7 so lord of scriptures to read huh? so please be ready ephesians 3 and verse 7 of which i became a minister according to the gift of the grace of god given to me by the effective working of his power okay so no paul writes that uh, the gift of grace which was given to him by the power of god so to each one of us there is grace that has been given grace again is empower empowering god's uh, uh, empowering or enabling we may call it so in this context grace the meaning of grace is god's enabling so god enables us so god gives grace to each one of us for various things that he calls us to do when we go straight back to the old testament i mentioned that different people were anointed so there were generally priests who were anointed prophets who were anointed kings who were anointed um but those people were empowered differently yes or no you had the prophet who was empowered to prophesy but you would generally not see the uh, the king prophesying okay one off here and there some incident we can talk about but normally the prophet is the one who is empowered to prophesy that is the grace or the enabling of god on the prophet what about the king anointed to rule grace enabling to rule can you ask the prophet take the take the army and go fight a battle may not be able to because no enabling so in the same way coming back to the new testament based on god's calling for each of our lives there is a grace of god given to us so now i want to increase in the anointing how here is a step identify god's grace because the anointing will flow align to the grace of god it will flow align to the gifting of god in our lives so for example if just take teaching ministry okay example if god's grace on somebody's life is teaching the word you may find that when they are teaching it's benefiting the people they are understanding because that's the enabling on that person's life now if this person denies the grace of god on their lives and says i'm not going to teach okay i will lead worship maybe they are not able to sing properly or they are not able to uh, you know play the instrument so they just don't have the grace to do it they try doing it but it's not working very well like people are not being blessed if they are moving into worship god has called them to teach so where will they be most effective teaching it's like that so if the anoint if i want to flow in more anointing i have to identify what is my area of grace and stick to that we are not saying don't lead worship see sometimes in some of our uh, uh, churches when we are just starting out and all we may not have a worship team there is no option pastor will uh, clean the church pastor will you know usher pastor will uh, yeah preach the word lead the worship do the intercession prophesy everything pastor only has to do no option but in those situation there's no option but once we have the option try 
to go in the line where God is calling us. We'll see more anointing there. Now, have you ever experienced somebody leads worship and you feel so blessed? You feel like, wow, this person was born to do this, you know, because God's power is there. Now, if that individual leaves the grace which God has for them and tries to do something else, it will not work. So, what are we saying? Let's identify the grace of God on our lives and flow in that direction. You will see more power of God manifesting. Let's not try to compete with others. What is the grace of God on my life? I'll be faithful to that. right? And here is another beautiful thing that you and I can actually grow in the grace of God. So we received a grace from God, but it can increase. It can increase. Okay. There are other passages like, you know, 2 Peter 3.18 where Peter says, grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, James 4.6, God gives more grace to the humble. So you and I can also desire increasing the grace of God on our lives. So when grace increases, what will happen to the anointing? Increase. Yeah, so we're looking for more grace. So coming back to the teaching example, if the person who's teaching, right, they are being faithful to that call and they're saying, okay, God, this is the grace, I'll work hard. You know, I study the scriptures, I will, uh, you know, equip myself, maybe I'll, uh, you know, go to Bible college, something like that. Or every opportunity that comes my way, little or big, I will take it up, I will faithfully serve you. What do we notice? They become better and better and better in their teaching. How did they get from, you know, struggling to explain a few scriptures to Maybe, you know, preaching to many people quite clearly at some point in their lives. Growing in the grace of God, which is also helping them increase in the anointing of God over their lives. More and more people are blessed. More and more people are receiving the revelation. More and more people are walking in freedom, okay, uh, based on the word of God. So this is how it works. Grace can increase. And our, our attempt is to desire for more grace, increase in the grace and thereby increase in the anointing. So it really depends on what God is calling each person to do. Okay, uh, There are varied measures of grace. Uh, now, another thing that I just quickly want to say is, uh, yes, we can increase in the grace of God to the extent that God wants. Because... When we notice, you know, that there are, uh, uh, okay, fine. I'll come to that during impartation. So, are you all understood so far? Okay, great. Any questions so far about the, the grace of God, the gift of God? Mm, how can we identify God's grace? Um, so, in order to identify God's grace, we have to take chances. That's what I would say. And uh, places like this, like here at Bible College, so many opportunities are given. Okay, you pray, you uh, uh, share the word, you lead worship, you know, you do this, you do that. So what's happening? There are all these opportunities and we try serving, right? So we are able to see whether, you know, there's that uh, ease of doing that particular ministry or not. So as God starts opening doors and we start serving, we'll, we'll know whether this is the area or not. So basically, you have to take a chance. You have to step out boldly and uh, start, take the opportunity. That's what I want to tell all of us. How to know what is God's grace? Step out. Step out every time. You know, whenever God is showing you the way, say, okay, God, I'll go for it. Keep going for it. And then you'll understand whether... That's meant for you or not. But it, sometimes what happens, people don't do anything. And then they say, God is not guiding me. 
can we guide a parked car it will stay parked forever it will be there only but if the car is moving then we can direct turn right turn left so start moving that's how we identify god's grace yes in the uh, one small uh, footnote it's like um, uh, where we also get carried away you know it's like we see other numbers huh. okay so one thing what i've also just heard recently and i've also experienced is like you know irrelevant of looking at the numbers it's like an experience so if god is telling you to speak anything to one particular person that itself can be a mighty anointed uh, word or a, a thing to that person and when that person comes back to you later and tell then you know that was anointed it was not a thing because um, i heard a preacher uh, preach uh, recently that you know most of jesus uh, sermons you know the very powerful anointed ones for it was for a crowd of one more than the numbers we somehow get carried away in the ministry you know if it's a bigger church and more numbers there is more anointing which is not necessarily the case at all times mm-hmm. sure uh, akhil so uh, akhil i agree with you and i um, see where you're coming from uh, but just to, just to add to it so what you said is correct it's not about it's not about you know uh, just glorifying numbers okay uh, each life should be affected and that's what we are here for but having said that right if you go to john 15 the scripture says and you like we will bear more fruit the father prunes us to bear more fruit so that uh, god is glorified so i just want us to also remember that uh, god looks for the multiplication of talents right so yes initially that's fine but eventually after having given sufficient time growth and multiplication is should be a result of any ministry that god has given us because uh, that glorifies god being fruitful in that sense glorifies god so there's nothing wrong also to expect But what uh, i was saying yeah. to say even the people who have had mega churches and thing they also would have uh, started literally at uh, ground level at like right. scratch level at zero yes. number of people yeah. one two a bible study a small thing and that's how god has actually flourished uh, thing correct mm. no mm. are you getting me ma'am what no, i'm no, trying I to say no i got it i i got it even those who have uh, it's a big ministry and thing they also would have started and uh, groomed from the scratch by the right, holy spirit right, and thing and yeah. then that's how you see how they've actually grown and the way ministry has also been blessed and multiplied sure yeah so uh, that's correct it's absolutely correct yeah nobody starts with a big number uh, and i'm just saying like there's it's a balance right like one is to pay that individual attention but at the same time not lose focus on uh, like the way the great commission is put like go to the uh, ends of the earth so our eyes are on both we are very focused on an individual but at the same time we want to reach many people so that there's a balance there that's what i was pointing to okay great so yes i think we'll stop here it's already time we saw only one uh, way in which you can you and i can grow in the anointing and that is to identify the enabling of god which is the grace of god and the associated gifts so let me say this and stop for today based on the grace we will have gifts so if i don't if i'm not called to something for example if i'm called to um you know engage in in worship and music and you know all those kind of things and if i feel like oh god's called me to sing and uh, in play instruments and be technically sound regarding you know how the how sound works and all of that i will have certain skill sets or we may want to call them gifts that i will be able to handle all these aspects but if let's say one person is not called to that they will lack the skill sets like for example i want to be that person you know who's into music production worship this that but maybe i can sing maybe i can play an instrument but that's it i'm not i don't have the skill set to understand you know music production and no matter how much i try i can try for 10 years i can try for 20 years i might be doing i might be in the wrong line and there's no increase so when we are being unproductive despite our hard work for a long time and 
also i'm sure the holy spirit will give us witness in our spirit saying this is not for you don't try to keep doing this because this is not for you so we must be sensitive to the holy spirit go into the area where we have the grace and with the grace come connected gifts we'll be able to do it because god himself has given us the ability to do those things okay so let as we are mindful and start growing in that area you see more anointing more blessing that's one way to increase in the anointing okay so let me just stop here um and just a disclaimer i'm not saying don't be patient with god you know in, in certain situations when god gives a promise it takes a while to see the fruitfulness that's not what i'm talking about i'm talking about being in the wrong grace or wrong area where there's no grace all right so any thoughts any questions before we pray and close Hmm. Okay, if we desire to uh, do certain ministry where we don't have the grace, but if we desire it, is it wrong? Um, I think it's not wrong. But once you we understand that God is not calling us in that area, <coughs> it's worthwhile investing time and energy in what God is calling us to do. Otherwise, we will waste time. Yeah, we will lose time. Sure. So let's uh, stop right here then. And uh, again, uh, one of our online students, please uh, help us close in prayer for today. Let's pray. Loving Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to give you praise and honor you this morning. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have taught us this morning, King of Glory. Father, we thank you for your spirit, O oh God, our Father of wisdom that you have given unto us, O oh God. We still surrender our lives before you, and we surrender the next class, our Father, unto your hands, King of Kings. We ask of you to take over, our Father. We ask of you to speak to us and open our understanding, Lord. We worship you and praise you. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. 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 And thank you. Thank you, Miriam. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. And uh, grow in the anointing of God.